Recently, I've done a couple of videos on how Apple abuses the legal system in the United States and other countries to keep people from repairing their own products. In Norway, I covered a story on how they sued a repair shop owner for the crime of refurbishing iPhone screens to offer those refurbished screens to customers who wanted an alternative to Apple. And I've also covered how in the United States, how Apple works in tandem with the government, with Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, to seize packages that repair shops order with parts like dock connectors, headphone jacks, power buttons, any type of thing that they don't want us to be able to fix. Now, Apple, they do things that are underhanded like this, and it's pretty wrong. But you have to think to yourself, where did they get the idea? Where did they get the inspiration? Where did they get the blueprint on how to use the government and the legal system to screw over their customers and ensure that they have a monopoly on the repair or lack of repair of their own products? And that comes from Microsoft. Looking on at Apple with this sense of jealousy and rage, like, oh. Remember in the 90s, the good old days when like, we were the evil company, and now they're the evil company. Well, they look at Apple and they see things like, oh, they're suing repair shop owners. Hold my beer, we're gonna put them in prison. And that's not a joke, because that's exactly what they did with Eric Lundgren. Eric Lundgren owns a refurbishing and e-waste recycling company in California that deals with a lot of e-waste. He has something around 50, 80 plus employees or so, and his company, deals with a lot of laptops in addition to other types of, of consumer devices. And a lot of these devices that get thrown away, they work and they have Windows license keys in the bottom of them. They just need the operating system reinstalled. A lot of those machines get parted out, which is a complete waste because they're still totally useful as machines. They don't need to be parted out. There does not need to be waste. They do not need to be ground down for the value of their individual metals. So what he did is he started downloading these Windows CDs off of sites. You know, Dell, Lenovo, these companies offer Windows restore disks. And if you're old like me, you remember back in the day when Windows laptops actually came with these disks and you could use these disks to restore your machine. If your hard drive died, if it got slow, if you downloaded, you know, a porn file that ended in .exe instead of .mp4, you could reinstall your operating system and start from scratch. They no longer include these disks. Since they don't include these disks, it's a little bit more difficult to reinstall the operating system. You can technically make a restore disk, but you now have to know to make the restore disk before your computer fails, which is something a lot of people just don't do. And a lot of people don't have a second computer. So what he decided to do was download the software, which is freeware from, the, from these company websites that is free, legal, and legit, and burn copies of that software to CDs and then offer that CD to people for 25 cents, which is literally kind of the cost of a CDR. And for, the, for, for doing that, he is going to be spending 15 months in federal prison in addition to paying something like a 40 or $50,000 fine. A Microsoft attorney named Bonnie Magneton decided to write to the judge describing the case as one of software piracy, costing the computer industry billions of dollars annually, and saying that prosecution was important to deter others from engaging in the illicit global trade and decoupled product activation keys, and that this type of software piracy, could these disks could have been sold for $20 each, and that 75% of that was Microsoft's profit, so it demanded restitution of $420,000. Do keep in mind that these disks were being sold at somewhere about 25 cents, and those disks can be, down, can be burned using software that is literally available to download for free. If I wanted right now, since I own a couple of Dell and Lenovo laptops, I could download software that allows me to reinstall Windows for free. The value is not in the actual disk. The value is in the license that allows the software to work. McGloin testified that a free restore CD was worth the same price as a new Windows operating system with a license. This was false and inaccurate testimony provided by Microsoft in an attempt to set a precedent that will scare away future recyclers and refurbishers from reusing computers without paying Microsoft again for another license. So the idea here is that Microsoft will charge the refurbisher for the license and the copy of the software. And they're claiming that this was the 20, that the, the CD was worth $20 and that the license was worth $5. Now, this is easily disproven by the fact that you can download the software that allows you to make that disc again for free. This is, this is BS. They're making this up. The value is in the license. It's not in the software. If the value was in the software in the CD, then you wouldn't be giving people software that allows them to make their own restore discs with all these Dell and Lenovo computers that get sold and include it for free with the actual operating system. This individual decided to lie to the court in order to set a precedent with a judge that's likely 
not exactly the most technically savvy. I know that we live in a very highly politically correct society where we can't talk about the truth of our human experiences, but this really needs to be discussed, even if it will aggravate a lot of people. The judge who presided over this case, the judge who could not tell the difference between a license key and a restore disk, the judge that thinks that a license key with a restore disk is worth just as much as a restore disk that's freely downloadable, was born in 1943. We need to talk about this. And I talked about this in my last video when I talked about how individuals involved in writing the law, interpreting the law, and making the law when it comes to modern technology are out of touch with modern technology. Now, I understand there's a lot of elderly individuals that were responsible for the technology we make that we use today. There are a lot of individuals like Dennis Ritchie that contributed more to technology and the world of computing in two months than I will in my entire lifetime. We also have to acknowledge the fact that on average, these are the exceptions and not the rule. My father was born in the 1940s. God bless him. He's a smart guy. He spent six months after buying books to teach himself Microsoft Word. It's just, just think about your experience when somebody who in your family was born in the 1940s has a virus on their computer. What is that like? When someone who was born in the 1940s comes to you and has a question on, on, on how to say, get the music off of their iPod and back onto the computer, like what is that like on average? Not the exceptions, but the average. What is that like? I know it's not politically correct to point that out, but this is important because people are going sent to prison under false pretenses because of judges that don't understand how to interpret laws because they don't understand technology. I want you to imagine living in a society whereby your freedom, your ability to live as a free man or live in prison next to rapists and murderers depended on your ability to properly walk your grandmother through the complexities of modern technology. Just think about that for a second and get an idea of what it must feel like to be Eric Lundgren right now, explaining to a judge who was born in 1943 the difference between a software license and a restore CD. People's lives are going to be ruined. And if you want to live in a society where people can get away with the type of stuff that I talk about in this channel. When I went up to the lobby for Right to Repair in May of 2015, the people that I spoke to said that lobbyists came to them and said that when I run a jumper wire, when I run a bodge wire, on a motherboard that I am then turning a Mac into a PC and they believed them. There's a reason for this. It's being out of touch with technology and it's something that we gotta face because if we just pretend that this is not a problem to be politically correct, then more people's lives are gonna be ruined as a result of lawmakers that don't understand how to interpret laws when it comes to modern technology. Johnny and Bonnie made all of this stuff up. They lied and because Johnny and Bonnie lied, an innocent man is going to spend 15 months in prison. Lundgren said, I thought it was freeware. If it's free, I'm just gonna duplicate the free repair tool and give it away, and that'll be fine, he thought. The value's in the license, and surprise, surprise, they didn't understand that. At the time that this article came out, his appeal was pending before the 11th Circuit. That appeal has been lost. He has been sentenced to 15 months in prison and a fine of somewhere between $40,000 to $50,000. Microsoft also said in a statement that they actively support effort to address e-waste and have worked with responsible e-recyclers to recycle more than 11 million kilograms of e-waste since 2006. Unlike most e-recyclers, Mr. Lundgren sought out counterfeit software, which he disguised as legitimate and sold to other refurbishers. Let's take, again, this is that whole thing with that definition of counterfeit that Apple uses and also that Microsoft uses. If I download a copy of your software Software using one of your own tools and then I burn it to a disk. That is not counterfeit. The ones and zeros, it, it, it either is or it isn't. It either passes the checksum or it fails the checksum. But there's no, you, you can't say that if I burn an exe file of your software that that is now counterfeit because I burned the, the copy of it. Especially if it's software that you are hosting and making available to people for free. This is, this is not counterfeiting, and this is a complete lie, and this lie works because they're dealing with a legal system that does not understand technology, and that is a big problem, and we need to make sure that the lawmakers and that the people that are reading these cases understand technology, because if they don't, individuals like him are going to end up being put in federal prison. Now, again, you may think that what he did was wrong. You may think something like, well, okay, Lewis, what if maybe he wrote Windows on it and they don't want somebody to be able to claim that it's Windows without independently verifying it. Maybe they used Microsoft's copyright or trademark without permission, and that's why. And okay, fair enough, you can make that argument. But should an individual that has the ability to convert 
a gasoline-powered car to an electric car? Should an individual that runs an e-waste recycling company with 100 employees that's helping the environment and making products available to people, again, that can't afford it, should the punishment for that be $35,000 of taxpayer dollars being allocated to put a highly capable technical individual who has no history of violence, no history of wanting to break the law, in prison, into a cage that we taxpayers are paying for just because Microsoft is butthurt. Is this a good use of our legal system? Is this a good use of our taxpayer dollars? Would the world be a better place if Mr. Lundgren was in prison or out of prison? Would his company run more efficiently with him in prison or out of prison? Does he fit in more with the general population in prison or out of prison? These are all good questions to ask, and these are all questions that are predicated on the fact that parts of our legal system have too much power when they shouldn't have that much power, and they are staffed by individuals who do not understand technology in an ever-changing world. Even if you agree that what he did was wrong, what he did was egregious, what he did was terrible, this punishment does not fit the crime. A guy that burned copies of freely available software to CD is going to be put in jail with thieves, with rapists, with assaulters, with violent criminals, with people that sell cocaine, because he burned copies of freely available software. This is not even cracked. If you go on BitTorrent and you download copies of Windows that have been cracked, you have committed a worse crime than this man. And this is something that nobody seems to understand and that nobody seems to care about and that nobody seems to be outraged about. Why should this guy spend 15 months in prison for doing something that, let's face it, like there's 350,000 subscribers here. One of you has done something worse than this man with cracked software. And he's not even dealing with cracked software. He is burning copies of software that will only work if you already have a license key. And he is not selling or making available a license key. This is insane. This should not be allowed to stand. This verdict should not. The right to repair has been hotly debated in recent months, particularly because California proposed a law that would require electronics manufacturers to make repair information and parts available to product owners and to third-party repair shops, compatible with everything, and people are used to it. similar legislation. Most major tech companies, including Apple and Microsoft, are opposed to the idea of letting users fix their own devices on the grounds that it poses security risk to users, which we can see in Microsoft's above statement. Although Lundgren's case demonstrates the companies are likely more concerned over loss and profit than anything else. Now, I can understand if you have a concern over security. Maybe you're afraid that I'm going to burn copies of Windows that I downloaded from Dell or Lenovo's website but I'm going to include a virus in it, I'm going to package it, and I'm going to label it Windows with my bad handwriting and sell it to people. And hey, okay, if I do that, by all means, call me a criminal. Call me a hacker. Call me a degenerate. Toss me away and throw away the key. Is there any mention in any of these articles that he was selling anything other than a copy of a Windows Restore CD that you could make yourself? Is there any proof that anything that he sold was hacked? compromised, had key loggers in it, at least other than the ones that Microsoft has in there for the NSA. No, no proof at all. No wrongdoing, no security flaws, besides those present of Microsoft's own operating system. Microsoft is abusing the power of the government to put people in jail for the sole reason that they made products easier to service. And that is bullshit. If we look at their claim, they're saying that they're helping with the recycling of e-waste. Bullshit. Look at this video from iFixit. Look at this video from iFixit. Look at this device. Look at how they make it. We have, we settled on the ultra dangerous heat gun and Jimmy. This Alcantara stuff is really, really tough to remove and really, really prone to cutting and tearing. Oh, and about heat guns. If you look away for a second, bad things might happen. But it's fine. You don't need a delete or backspace key anyway, right? After much more cutting, tearing, prying, heating, and melting than we'd like in an opening procedure, we finally get the fabric cover off and are met with yet another glued-in piece of gear. Another point of concern is that we can't see where the battery is connected to the motherboard, so we'll have to continue our disassembly with the battery still connected. The Surface Laptop scored a whopping 0 out of 10, and here's why. This laptop is not meant to be opened or repaired. You can't get inside without inflicting a ton of damage. The CPU, RAM, and onboard storage are soldered to the motherboard, so upgrades are a no-go. And while the headphone jack is modular, it can only be accessed by removing the heatsink, fan, display, and the motherboard. And lastly, the battery is difficult and dangerous to replace, giving the device a limited lifespan. And that's all for this teardown. They, they don't care. 
they're, they're as bad as Apple. If anything, they're worse than Apple because they combine all the negative repairability of Apple with none of the innovation that Apple has. Microsoft hasn't innovated anything in the consumer space for over 20 years. Their cell phones, their MP3 players, they haven't innovated anything at all when it comes to their operating system. Even when they try to redo it or revamp it, they wind up ruining it and having to go back to old iterations of their interfaces. There's, this is just a company that is losing market share that is clinging to any notion of profit. And they're doing so by abusing the government, by abusing the state, by lying. These two individuals who lied and made things up to take advantage of a legal system that does not understand technology in order to ruin an innocent man's life deserve to be shamed and held accountable for their actions. They made trivial the aspect of throwing an innocent man in prison. And for that, shame on you.